tell you what I think of Jesus Since I found in him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how he changed my life completely He did something that no other friend could do We are told of the Creator God who loved us so much that he chose to give us the one most precious thing he had his only son and the son willing to please his father agreed to go and die and not just to die but to face our enemy and their enemy and destroy his power against us and them the pre-existent Jesus who was whole perfect and secure in eternity because of love stepped down into human flesh and became subject to a creation made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death yes in due season he found himself in the form of a man flesh and blood and we must bear in mind that all of his temptations were in proportion to his divinity as well as his humanity and they were all real or otherwise when he said I have overcome it was but a sham and a pretense the Holy Spirit comes to reveal the depths of his love and to submit to us that every temptation of Jesus in his flesh he refused to indulge in on the basis of his love for us he did not please himself but obeyed the will of the Father in all things and when Satan tempted him it was real temptation he could have thrown in the towel with Lucifer and joined forces with him and started a joint kingdom at every turn the voices came the darkness came the world made its appeal to the Son of God over and over and over but please take notice that over and over and over Jesus withstood he said no he endured because he loved us and to give in would make his death meaningless truly no more than just another man on a cross it is imperative that Jesus maintain absolute trust in the promise of the Father to deliver him out of the jaws of death hell and the grave as it is written he emptied himself he was no small his was no small trust especially with Satan daunting him and accusing the father's integrity before him day and night no doubt Jesus endured doubt and fear beyond anything we could ever imagine the furnace was heated beyond anything a mere human could endure every lustful urge was redirected into doing the will of the Father when he looked away from the fulfillment of the moment to the everlasting joy and fulfillment of eternity with the Heavenly Father and the thought of bringing many sons into glory when he looked for human friendship and comfort he received the kiss of betrayal and even his closest disciples could not tarry with him long that night he had never been so alone yet not nearly as alone as he was going to be if he became the sin offering and went into the depths of Satan's power and domain 
While in the garden, he could still cry out to the Father. There was still the presence of angels who ministered to him as his sweat became great drops of blood. But the worst was yet to come. His own will was being wrung out of him. Any drop of desire he might have to save himself, to back out, to reason with the Father for another way, fell on the ground beneath him. And when there was not one ounce of struggle left in one fiber of his being, he rose up and submitted in love to his executioners declaring, Satan has now come, but he shall find nothing in me. For the greatest of these is love. And with his face now set like a flint, carved out of the rock of love, he anticipated the battle of the ages that lay before him. Oh, how much he cared He was to deny his own strength, his own wholeness, ready to be poured out like a fountain to all the world. This is my blood that was shed for you. Ready to distribute to all who would receive him. The weight of the cross that was laid on Christ was nothing when compared to the weight of the sins of the world no other could do. that was laid on him. No Would he refuse to die within the pain of the first nail driven into no his hands or feet? No. Pain couldn't take his love away. There's no other When he was mocked and spat upon, could shame cause his soul to draw back? No. Shame could not take his love away. When all the powers of darkness bore down upon his soul, could Satan's worst attack cause him to curse God and die? No. The darkness could not turn him away from his love. As he hung, surrendered between heaven and hell, and the demons gaped upon him and the sinners railed, then suddenly the face of the Father could no longer look upon him and turned away. And his turning caused the sky to turn black. And Jesus cried out in the darkness in the unspeakable pain of separation, of broken union and fellowship with his Father, which he had never experienced before. By far the worst of all. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? No denying that his love held him to the cross. Not the nails, but the love. From within the depths of his love, he found that he was willing to be broken into countless pieces rather than remain whole so that everyone could share in his life and partake of him. What a scene it must have been when he entered the Holy of Holies in heaven and stood before the mercy seat and with freshly nailed pierced hands poured out his blood for us.